We continue our discussion of the affirmative defenses. The most familiar such defense is self-defense. In this installment, we consider the doctrine that comes into play when the defendant comes to the defense of another person. Consider a community theater production of Shakespeare's Othello. The climax of the play is where, in Act 5, Othello suffocates his wife, Desdemona, for her supposed infidelity. Let's say that Adele is rehearsing the role of Desdemona in the production of Othello. Bernice stumbles upon Clarence, who seems to be strangling Adele. Seeing no alternative, Bernice shoots Clarence dead. Does Bernice have a justification defense? Bernice thinks she is defending Adele. In reality, Adele is not threatened at all. Clarence is simply rehearsing the role of Othello. If Bernice had been correct, she would be entitled to acquittal of charges of criminal homicide. But the law is less forgiving if Bernice makes a mistake when defending someone else. Traditional doctrine imposes a stand-in-the-shoes test. The defendant has a defense only if the third party was privileged to use the same force the defendant used. In our hypothetical, the measure of Bernice's privilege is Adele's privilege. Had Adele shot Clarence, she would have no defense of self-defense. She knew Clarence was simply playing a part with her in a play. Therefore, Bernice could not raise a defense of self-defense. Had she been in Adele's shoes, she would not have believed she faced a threat of imminent deadly force. Of course, Bernice wasn't in Adele's shoes, and Bernice did not know that Clarence was only playing a role. Under traditional doctrine, we use force in aid of others at our peril. This has seemed harsh. Gradually, the majority of American jurisdictions have moved away from the traditional position. They measure the defendant's privilege as they would if she were defending herself. Consequently, the majority in the model penal code position is that the defendant has a complete defense if the defendant's beliefs are reasonable. It would be for the jury to determine whether a reasonable person in Bernice's situation would believe Adele faced an imminent deadly attack that could be prevented in no other way. If so, Bernice has a complete defense. If not, Bernice has no defense, unless the doctrine of imperfect self-defense applies. The model penal code is consistent with the majority, but mistakes are graded according to whether the mistake is reckless or negligent. An unreasonably mistaken Bernice is convictable only of criminally negligent homicide. A recklessly mistaken Bernice would be convictable of manslaughter. One more thing. Go back to the facts of Getz. Recall that this was not an empty subway car when Getz opened fire. We don't know how crowded it was, but it was probably pretty well filled, even on a Saturday afternoon. Which raises the question, Suppose one of the shots gets fired, struck, and killed another passenger. Let's stipulate, contrary to fact, that Getz was privileged to use deadly force upon or toward Troy Canty. Does that mean it does not matter what happens to bystanders? There is remarkably little authority on this question here in the trigger-happy United States. A Pennsylvania case... Commonwealth versus Fallon, holds that if privileged to use force, a defendant is not liable for reckless injury to innocent third persons. The casebook has a nice hypothetical to draw out the apparent consequence of Fallon. Suppose a bad guy is shooting at you with an AR-15 from a crowded school bus. Your options are, one, die of gunshot wounds, and two, take out the shooter with your bazooka first and save your life. Sadly, you know option two will cost the lives of scores of school kids, as well as the shooter and the driver. 
the drafters of the model penal code felt they had to write something that would cover this kind of case. Fowlin apparently provides a complete defense if you bazooka the school bus to save your one sorry neck. The model penal code appears to reject Fowlin. It says, When the actor is justified in using force upon or toward the person of another, but he recklessly or negligently injures or creates a risk of injury to innocent persons, the justification is unavailable for such recklessness or negligence toward innocent persons. This means, apparently, that in the bazooka school bus hypo, you would be convictable of scores of counts of manslaughter. I think. This seems to turn on whether you're risking the lives, heck, taking the lives, of the school children is justified. We will come back to this question as we complete our survey of the affirmative defenses. Meantime, think of others and maintain your social distance.